right. We want to start talking about some of the details of a hypothesis test. So first of all, there are conditions, assumptions and conditions that need to be made. First is we need to be dealing with a random sample, okay? This makes sure that our sample will not be biased and therefore systematically underestimate or overestimate the mean because then if I miss the mean, I'm not surprised because I was biased in my sample in the first place. So randomness helps reduce bias so that we have an unbiased estimator, okay? Um, independence, this independence allows us to use our standard deviation formulas, the sigma over the square root of n or the square root of pq over n or the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, that standard error formula. So we need independence. And then thirdly, we need normality. And this allows us to calculate probabilities, right? Because we know that our um, Z tables and our T tables only work if we have a Z distribution or a T distribution, okay? And so we need normal. And either you start out with a normal distribution or you use central limit theorem. Um, that's with quantitative data. And if you have a really small sample, you plot it. And as long as there's no strong skewness or outliers, you know that the sampling distribution will be relatively normal. Now, the alternative for proportions, when your parameter is a population proportion, you need large counts where your NP and your NQ are both at least 10. And that means that your binomial distribution will be symmetric, NP and NQ, both at least 10. Okay. Second idea is what's called a test statistic. The test statistic is just like a z-score, right? When we were calculated z-score, you'd take your x value, you'd subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, you find out how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. Well, a test statistic says you get your estimate, your x bar or your p hat, and you subtract the hypothesized value, the claim, mu or rho, and you divide by your standard deviation of your estimate, which is either your sigma divided by your square root of n, or if you don't know sigma, then the standard deviation of your sample divided by your square root of n, or square root of pq over n, okay? And that's your test statistic. You get your estimate, your x bar, or your p hat, minus your hypothesized value, your mu or your rho, and you divide by your standard deviation of your sampling distribution, okay? And what we see here is sometimes it looks like this. Your Z is your X bar minus the mean of your X bars divided by the sigma of your X bars. That's just mu and that's sigma over square to N. Now, if you don't know that, you got to use T if you don't know sigma. And so what we see is X bar minus mu of X divided by your standard error, which is just your standard deviation of your sample divided by your square root of N. And then sometimes we're not looking for X bar and mu of X bars, we're dealing with P hats. And so you take your P hat minus mu of your P hat divided by sigma of your P hats, which is square root of PQ over N. Okay. And so these are all your test statistics and they're just your Z scores and your T scores. Okay. And they're calculated by taking what I got my sample compared to the sampling distribution, my sample compared to the sampling distribution, my sample compared to the sampling distribution. Okay. That's your test statistic. And then how do you get those test statistics? Well, you can use normal CDF and TCDF to get them. Okay. But just like we go from X to Z to percentile to percent, right? X to Z to P. Well, now we're going from an X bar to a test statistic to a P value. We're going from a P hat to a test statistic, to a p-value. And you can work your way backwards by doing inverse norm, inverse t, um, and solving things like that, okay? So just like we learned way back in chapter two, x to z to percent, well, now we're going from x bar to test statistic to p-value, okay? Um, same instructions on your calculator, and we'll have even nicer shortcuts for hypothesis tests coming up very soon. But let's talk one last idea. This idea, what the heck is a p-value? And I want to go through the logic of a p-value with you, okay? The p-value is saying, if the null hypothesis is true, if the null hypothesis is true, then we want to say the probability of me getting a sample like mine is my p-value, okay? So if the null hypothesis is true, then my sample of size N is one of all possible samples of size N coming from the known sampling distribution, which is centered around my null hypothesis claim of my mu or my parameter um, population proportion, okay? And I know exactly what 
that distribution looks like. And then the probability that a sample would be like mine or more extreme is P, the P value, okay? If P is large, then it's not unreasonable to believe the null hypothesis. And we basically say there is insufficient evidence to reject it. I'm looking, right? Remember that back to lesson one. I'm seeking evidence against the null. And if I get a reasonably high probability, I say, you know what? This isn't a lot of evidence against the null. I don't have enough evidence to reject it. So I'm going to go on believing that they put 20 ounces of soda in my Coke bottles, even if they're lying about it. I just don't have enough evidence yet. Okay. We fail to reject the null. If your P value is very, very small, then there's two possible explanations. We're unlucky and we got an unlucky sample. And what's the probability of getting a sample like mine or more extreme? The P value. Maybe it's 2%. Wow. I'm really unlucky. I got a one out of 50 sample. Okay. Or the null hypothesis is false. And my sample came from a different sampling distribution, which is centered around some different parameter than the one that's claimed, in which case the null hypothesis is actually false. And so we reject the null. Okay. So we're, we're going under the hypothesis. It's like a proof by contradiction. If the null hypothesis is true, then either this probability is reasonable and I can't reject that it's true, or my probability is small, and either I'm unlucky or you're lying in the first place, okay? So that's the idea of the logic behind a p-value, and really it's the probability that a sample would be like mine or more extreme, okay? I have a sample. What's the probability that someone else would get a sample like mine or more extreme? Because samples like mine, if they're unusual, maybe it's because someone's lying to me. Okay, so good luck and farewell.